Hi everyone. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install R and R Studio for both Windows and Mac devices. Now, in a previous workshop, I used to show this as separate uh, videos. Um, and I think after this workshop, I will return to doing that as a separate Mac and um, uh, Windows device uh, installation. But uh, for the current workshop, my R or my uh, Windows computer is being repaired. Uh, and so um, I didn't have time to sort of partition my Mac to run both Windows uh, and Mac OS. So I'm just going to quickly go over uh, both installation processes, but only show you uh, visually on the Mac device. They're very, very similar. So you'll be able to follow both ways. Now, uh, the first misconception uh, when you go and um, install R and R Studio that I often see, regardless of device, is that people will conflate the R software um, and the R Studio IDE, uh, which is an integrated development uh, environment. Now, R, the language, is something that can sort of run as its own standalone, and it is very similar to um, sort of a terminal if you've ever worked with that or console. Uh, in fact, if you install R, the software, you can run it directly in terminal without sort of an environment. On the other side, there's something called R Studio, which is uh, sort of an environment that makes R the language more user-friendly. So it adds a whole bunch of functionality. And so at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you uh, real basically um, that you can actually open up an R window and open up an R Studio window side by side, and they look similar but they are different. The reason that matters for installation is that uh, you actually need to install R first, otherwise you're going to get an error. Um, and so uh, what you're looking at here is uh, the location of where we're ultimately gonna install R Studio. Um, but uh, I wanna direct your attention to the description where you can find links for installing R for Mac OS and then R for Windows. So I'm first gonna show you how to install R uh, for Mac OS. So uh, if you go into the description, like I said, you'll find this link uh, and it's gonna open up uh, a whole bunch of different versions here. So it goes back to R 3.2.1, 3.3.3 and so forth, all the way up to the current versions, which are 4.2.2, either for uh, what's called an uh, M1 Mac or for the uh, standard uh, older versions, Intel 64-bit Max. And so uh, you will need to go ahead and find out what uh, version of Mac OS you uh, run and what uh, sort of um, Apple device you're on. So whether it's the M1 or the Intel. And so the way you can do this is actually quite simple on the Mac. So you can just go uh, up to the little Apple icon in the top left corner of your screen and then choose about this Mac. And then uh, you'll get both of that information. So whether you're running uh, something that's high Sierra or later, uh, most Macs uh, out in the world right now are probably on high Sierra or later since we're on Mac OS 13 and uh, this version is compatible all the way back to 10. Um, but if you, for whatever reason, are running an older version, um, of uh, Mac or you have a, a Mac OS and you have an older Mac device, there are uh, sort of legacy versions here as well. Um, so uh, I am running uh, Mac OS 13.01 and I know that from checking. I'm not gonna show you that process just to protect my serial number, um, but you can go ahead and click this link uh, or the respective link for when you find the proper R version. And then we're gonna go ahead and open this here. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead, click, and I get this screen right here with some really basic steps. So we just will follow through everything in the installer from the introduction to the summary, and we wanna keep all of the defaults. So I'm gonna go ahead, click continue, continue again. Uh, I have a message that pops up that says to continue installing the software, you must agree to the terms of the software license agreement. So we're gonna click agree. We're gonna go ahead and install. Uh, this is asking for my password. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. Uh, it's asking um, sort of access to my downloads folder. I'm gonna say, okay. And then we're gonna continue and just sort of watch it install. 
and installs relatively quickly uh, if you have stable Wi-Fi. It's a relatively small um, application, so you don't need to uh, worry about that. Great, so the installation was successful, so we can go ahead and click close. Uh, and then if it prompts this where it says, do you wanna move the installer to trash? You can go ahead and do so, so move to trash. Great, and then we're all set. Uh, now, um, I'm gonna sort of uh, open up our studio or our um, the language for you, which appears as sort of an R with a little gray uh, circle with it. So if we look at our bar here, it looks like um, a capital letter R with this gray circle um, surrounding it. And when you open that, you get something that looks like this. So we have sort of the R in, uh, uh, information up here. Um, and then just a little um, sort of sideways carrot. And that's sort of um, related to the traditional terminal or console or things along those lines, i.e. this is the R console. Great. So this is, uh, tells us that um, the actual language is installed, but we want R Studio itself. So we're going to go ahead and minimize this. And then we're going to come back here and go to uh, a new site which is called Posit. And so the reason uh, I'm even remaking this video is because uh, our studio was acquired or sort of merged with this uh, organization called Posit, uh, which develops open access software. Um, and so now there's a new location for our studio. The actual application is very similar while it will go through some changes in the future. Um, particularly to in integrate it better with uh, Python and other languages. Um, I just wanted to show you that there is a new site and that's where we're gonna be downloading it from. So uh, what's nice about Posit, and it was similar to the old website uh, for our studio, is that um, it actually can guess what operating system you're on. And so you actually don't really need to worry about identifying uh, the proper link for you, it will guess. So for example, when I go to our studio desktop, it knows that I'm on a Mac. And so we're able to sort of go ahead and download it for Mac. Now that's going to pop up down here at the bottom. I'm gonna let that load and then we can go ahead and proceed. So I'm gonna click on it and then it's gonna ask us to move this RStudio object into applications. Um, now uh, we're gonna go ahead and let that load. It's gonna take a couple of seconds to do. Great. So uh, that's actually all set now. So you can go ahead and exit out of that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and launch our studio. So we're gonna bring this back onto this side. And our studio is sort of a um, white square with a blue circle with R inside of it. So it looks very similar to the console, but it's actually distinct. We'll see what that looks like in just one second. Great. So what you're looking at here um, is the uh, RStudio IDE, um, which again, runs our console. Mine's gonna look different from yours just because uh, this is a, um, uh, sort of theme I've already installed. I already had our studio and things along those lines. So we don't need to worry about that. Um, yours is gonna appear white, similar to the console. But the main thing I just wanna quickly show you right now is uh, that our studio and our console are basically the, uh, the same, um, but our studio will build on our console. So here on the left in white, uh, we have our console. And we notice that down here in the bottom left panel, that it's going to be the exact same thing. So we see you know, our version 4.2.2. Uh, and then up here, we have our version 4.2.2, et cetera. So this panel down here is identical in every way to this right here. However, as we'll go over in uh, the next couple of videos and things along those lines, we're gonna have a whole bunch of extra functionality that we don't have um, in our console. 
great. So uh, if you have any questions with installing uh, R in our studio, just let me know in, um, in the Slack and I'm happy to sort of walk through that with you. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do before I send you on your way is uh, just confirm for Windows folks that it's exactly the same. So the link for our studio is gonna be down in the description um, and you can install it the same way. And just like we have this screen for Mac OS, for Windows, it's gonna be the exact same thing. Um, so we'll uh, have a bunch of links in the description. You can just click download R4.2.2 for Windows, and then uh, you can go ahead and proceed through the same sort of menu. Now, the only other thing that I wanted to show you uh, while uh, sort of installing R for Windows is that you're gonna to need to check your system again but it's a little bit more involved in Windows. And so I have the steps here where you're gonna click on the start button, go to settings, system, and then about. And then within there, you have sort of two different descriptions. So you can go under device specifications and see the system type. So that will essentially tell you whether you're running a 32-bit or 64-bit uh, version of Windows, which is an important distinction. Um, and then from there, um, you can also uh, tell uh, sort of what uh, edition or version of Windows your device is running. Um, my guess for the vast majority of you, uh, even um, sort of uh, uh, older devices or what we consider older devices now, most of them will run some version of Windows 10 um, or uh, uh, ones that are sort of related. And so that will um, put you in this category of being able to run the newest 4.2.2 version just because pretty much anything post-2016 uh, falls into this category. Um, now, if you're running a 32-bit machine, I'm also gonna have links in the description for you to uh, sort of click and download. Um, but uh, if you have any questions on sort of your version or if you run into any errors, just let me know. But as I already mentioned, the actual RStudio download is gonna be identical for both Mac and Windows. Great, so thanks so much for watching and I'm super excited to get started with this workshop. Thanks so much.